Hello everyone, this is Toy House coming in today to tell you all about the five biggest mistakes that you're going to want to avoid in phase six of World of Warcraft Classic. So with that said, let's just jump right into the mistakes. I don't want to hold you guys up at all. So mistake number one in phase six is really not taking advantage of the Silithist World PvP event. Now, the Silithist World PvP event is going to grant Scenario and Circle reputation gains from monster kills, increasing that by 25%. It's also going to be applied within AQ20 and AQ40. So uh, basically, this world event uh, involves gathering Silithist. You're going to need to locate a lump of Silithist and carry it back to your encampment. Um, I talk about this in my Phase 6 preparation guide, but really, you know, if you, if possible, try to raid, try to align your, your raiding time, the time when you're farming rep for when you have this zone-wide buff uh, after collecting 200 Silithist. Um, if you're Alliance, it might be harder on Horde-dominated realms and vice versa, but really it would be a mistake to not take advantage of this because you're just going to get more bang for your buck in terms of time spent for reputation if you just are farming rep while you have the zone-wide buff. Now, that's just one world PvP event. There's also the Eastern Plaguelands PvP event. I would say that this is less important. You can get the 5% HP buff, and it's not as big of a deal, but it could be uh, another buff if you're really trying to min-max. Now, moving on to mistake number two, and this one is much, much bigger than mistake number one, and I see so many people make this mistake, but frankly, the biggest mistake of phase six, in my opinion, is mistake number two, missing out on the Scourge Invasion event. Now, the Scourge Invasion event is a limited time uh, event that will allow you to gather some items that will just never be available again in World of Warcraft, ever again and for that reason they're highly sought after some of them are more useful than others uh, and i'm going to talk through some of those items right now so first up is the tabard of the argent dawn now this tabard unlike in retail is really just all about looks it's just vanity it's for you know saying wow i was there i did it i have the tabard the tabard in classic wow does not actually do anything. So unlike in Future State WoW, where tabards are going to offer you reputation while you wear it and kill stuff, this tabard literally is just for show, for vanity, for uh, showing off. I mean, it looks pretty cool if you ask me, but, you know, really grab it while you can uh, if that's important to you, because after the Scourge invasion, it's just not going to be available anymore. So um, it would be a big mistake if you wanted this and did not get it during this time period. Now, let's move on to some more items that are a little bit more practical during the Scourge Invasion event, okay? So, we've got the Blessed, <laughs> Blessed Wizard Oil, kind of botched that one, and Consecrated Sharpening Stones. These are super practical. These are extremely important, actually. So, you can acquire these from completing the quest among uh, you know one quest of many under the shadow. So, essentially, if you turn in 10 necrotic runes, and these are... Uh, things that you're going to get through defeating Scourge Invasion minions. Um, these these items, I mean, they're just, they're really strong for Nax. I don't know what else to say. You should really get as many as you can. You know, one of them grants 60 spell damage, and the other one grants 100 attack power. So these are extremely strong uh, for clearing Nax. And, of course, these buffs are really only when fighting undead. should really make note of that. It's not just an awesome all-around buff. Um... From what I've heard, and I don't see this on the tooltip, some people have asked me about it, uh, I've heard that you can only carry a limited amount, and that number is 20, like a single stack, uh, because that's just how many you can carry. So, a uh, word of advice for min-maxing guilds. Now, of course, if you are a healer, you don't need these, right? Spell damage and attack power, neither of them are particularly useful for a healer, but... Have your healers stock up on these too, so you know you can use them on your melee and ranged DPS weapons through the trade window when they run out. And uh, you know if you're if you can only have 20 of the attack power runes, the consecrated sharpening stones, then also pick up as many blessed or blessed wizard oil as you can for for your spellcasters, right? So just try to stock up on these as much as you can. I think it would be a really big mistake to overlook doing this. Um, it's a pretty quick and easy win. It's, it's just a raid consumable that you should really stock up on. 
and I just think it's a, it's another way you can have uh, an edge uh, longer after the Scourge invasion events. And, and so eventually you're going to run out of them. But, you know, if you can just gather as many as you can, um, I think it's it'll uh, you're really making the most out of the Scourge invasion event. Um, so uh, the last part of the Scourge invasion event that I want to talk about are the Insignia of the Dawn and Insignia of the Crusade. These are tokens that are used in exchange for epic and superior armaments of the battle quests. The items are... Um, you know, probably at this point, and considering the audience of Classic WoW, probably useless. I'm going to be honest. You know, these epics, they have fine stats, but they're not bis. You don't need them. If you just re-rolled, maybe you're going to want these items, but you're not really going to be going after the items. Um, but what you will be going after is if you haven't acquired maybe, you know, the Panther bag or the Ani bag, and you still are looking for a nice bag, you can acquire a very nice bag through these uh tokens and you, you basically acquire insignias of the dawn through turning in dark iron scraps core of elements and you can acquire insignias of the crusade through crypt fiend parts and bone fragments savage fronds can also be turned in for either of the two so uh, you'll need to turn in those items 30 at a time and uh, no doubt these items will be in high demand so uh, take note of where they drop and you know um, make sure to uh, farm them and stock up on them and sell them or use them it's up to you um, so the reason um, you know some, some of these quests are important is uh, kind of leading right into mistake number three and the mistake number three can be costly it's a costly mistake that I feel like a lot of people may have made in the past and may continue to make coming in phase six and mistake number three is not getting Argent Dawn reputation to revered or exalted and the reason that this is important and let me just say you don't have to do this before phase five um i'm sorry before phase six you might want to do you you could start working on it now but you'll have plenty of opportunity to uh increase your argent dawn reputation during the scourge invasion event the reason it's important is because of the next ramus attunement event the next ramus attunement event which is basically just a quest or attunement is is just a quest uh all you have to do is complete it. it's a single quest it's called the dread citadel Naxramus. it requires some pricey materials if you are not revered or exalted and if you're revered it's just like 60 gold and if you're exalted it is completely free otherwise it will cost you arcane crystals nexus crystals and righteous orbs and quite frankly these materials are already going to skyrocket in price in phase six because these are the same materials that are going to be used to craft tier three so you can see uh, why, you know, you really are probably going to want to not have to turn that in just to get attuned to Nox Ramus. It's a big mistake to, new, to not get your reputation up before completing that attunement quest. Okay, let's move on to mistake number four, not stocking up on raid consumables and items. Now, the last thing I really want to mention about, you know, Nox Ramus is these uh, consumables, these raid uh, items that you should be gathering uh, pre pre phase six. I mean, frankly, uh, it's costly. You're going to need a lot of them. So you're going to need um, potions. You're going to need uh, resist gear, and you're going to need uh, a lot of consumables. So let's get through some of the stuff you should try to start stocking up on before phase six, so you don't make this mistake. So you're going to need greater frost protection potions. You're going to need frost resistance gear, and the frost resistance gear is going to be used for the saffron fight saffron is extremely healer intensive it has a frost aura it's a dot that does uh damage over time to everyone within 100 yards and uh has a number of other frost aoe abilities that do frost damage so frost resistance gear across the entire raid uh, is, a, is, a, is a necessity and it can uh, really be only crafted uh, for the most part, besides a few items, from uh, Master Craftsman Omerian inside of the Death Knight Wing of Nax. So there's the glacial set. You know, you're going to want to get the, you know, the glacial wrists, gloves, vest, and cloak. You're going to want the uh, Master Leatherworkers to create the polar and icy scale sets. That's going to be your bracers, gloves, tunic, and icy scale bracer gauntlets and breastplate and then the master blacksmiths can create the ice bane set which is the ice bane bracers gauntlets and breastplate and so these are going to be super important for the saffron encounter and all of them are going to require essence of water so if you are listening to this right now and you're thinking how can i not mess up phase six 
um, I would say, you know, really just start gathering as much essence of water as possible. If you're planning on making money in phase six, are you planning on clearing Naxxramas to the fullest in phase six? I think essence of water will probably be the single most item that goes up in price the most because everybody's going to need it to make their frost resistance armor. Everyone needs frost resistance armor. And unlike the tier three, uh, you know, items that you'll need to create craft tier three, those are different for each class. These are all going to be the same. They're all going to require essence of water. So uh, I would say that is the number one item. The number one mistake most people will probably make right now is not having enough essence of water going into Noxramus. There's also Chillwind Ecos. I know a lot of people farm those already, eco farming in winter, spring, trying to get some juju chill. It's going to help. Um, but uh, yeah, you're going to want to focus on Essence of Water. And then secondary, you can get the Chillwind Eco. You're, uh, you know, you could also stock up on nature protection, uh, potions. You could, you know, get some poison cleansing elixirs. Those will both help with Feralina. Um, you know, you, it might still be useful, uh, even if, you know, you guys are, you know, doing the fight correctly. Um, you're also going to want greater shadow protection potions and whipper root tubers along with heavy rune cloth bandages. That's really going to be for the low theb fight. Healers do not have a great time during that. So you're kind of on your own in, in many ways. So whipper root tubers, greater shadow protection potions, heavy rune cloth bandages really go crazy on that stuff. Um, so that's really, uh, I would say you, I mean, you could also even get fire protection potions. That'll definitely help with the four horsemen fight, um, with the meteor. Um, so you, you those are really the consumables you're going to want to be prepared to have going into phase six, because they're all going to go up dramatically in price. And I think it would be a big mistake not to stockpile those consumables beforehand. All right, guys, we're moving on to the final mistake. The, the biggest thing that I see, and it's little, it's a small thing that people mess up on uh, in phase six that I, I see people just completely forgetting or not even realizing is has been added to the game, and that is not getting new ranks of spells. I know, a newbie mistake, but some people just may not realize that new ranks of spells have been added. Maybe they didn't read the patch notes, but I'm just going to go through these new ranks of spells. And if you hear your class, and there's quite a few of them, make sure to go out and get this new rank of spell, whether that is you going out and farming it yourself or buying it on the auction house. So there's a new rank of Ferocious Bite from The Beast in Upper Black Rock Spire. There's a new rank of Flame Shock from Pyroguard Emberseer in Upper Black Rock Spire. And there's a new rank of Conjure Food from Archivist Galford. And that is in Stratholm, uh, Human Stratholm. And while you're there, I would highly recommend picking up some Stratholm Holy Water for that extra damage versus Undead. Could be very helpful in Noxramus. And there's also a new rank of Viscerate. You're definitely going to be wanting if you're a rogue from Blackrock Assassins in Blackrock Spire. And last, you're going to want Shadow Ward for Warlock and Frost Ward for Mages. Um, new ranks of those spells. Both of those I can see being highly valuable in Nox Ramus coming in phase six. And those are world drops. So, you know, whether you buy them from the auction house or you farm them yourselves, these are new ranks that you're definitely going to want to get. I do not recommend just not getting them. Um, it's really uh, absolutely worth it considering how many times you'll probably be using those abilities. So that's the end of the five biggest mistakes that people will probably make in phase six. Um, I hope this guide has helped you uh, avoid these mistakes in the future. I can't wait for phase six to come out. I think it's just one of the, the coolest lore uh, kind of flavor of World of Warcraft ever. I just love the undead theme, Naxxramas, Kel'Thuzad, the Four Horsemen. Um, I hope uh, I hope this was helpful. So if you guys like this video, go ahead and give it a like. If you want more like it, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, thank you guys for uh, joining me today, and I will see you guys in the next video. Take care.